Hey guys, welcome back to another one of my videos. So here we'll be going through a complete walkthrough for the Jan 2019 Paper 2HR of the new spec 4MA1. And as always, you know, we're going to go through everything step by step and see how it goes. But yeah, let's jump in straight to number one. So the table below gives information about the number of days that 100 cars, i.e. all the total frequency, were in an airport car park. So for example, if we look at the first row, it says that between 0 and 4 days, there were a total of 16 cars. And on the second time, between 4 and 8 days, there were 18 cars, and so forth. Now A, write down the modal class. So modal essentially means find the mode, or the most common um, number of days where they had the highest frequency. So all we do is look at the one that has the highest frequency, which is 27, and that is represented by 12 to 16 days. And that's your answer. So you write the class here. 12 less than d less than equal 6d okay part b work out an estimate for the mean number of days okay so to calculate the mean we just need two things and we always need this first we always need the midpoint and that's literally the midpoint of days and next we need something known as fx where f is the frequency and x is the midpoint now the midpoint refers to the the the, the value between the interval so in other words between 0 and 4 days, we know the midpoint is 2. Between 4 and 8 days is 6, and so forth. And then you're going to get 10, 14, and 18. By the way, if you're not too sure how to calculate a midpoint, a nice method is to actually sum them up, for example. To get a midpoint of 6, we can say 4 plus 8, which is 12, and then half of it you get 6. Or 8 plus 12 is 20, half of it is 10. And yeah, this is helpful if the values are very complicated. Now to get fx, just multiply across here. Yeah? So 16 times 2 is 32, and then so on. 18 times 6, which will give us 108. Next one is 190. 27 times 14 is 378. And lastly, 20 times um, 18, uh, 360. And now all you want to do is um, total these up. And when you total them up, you should get to do 1068. All you do now is use the total fx, so the mean equals total fx, which is 1068, over total frequency, which is 100. And doing so will give us a mean number of days of 10.68. And that's it, guys. That's one done. Okay, number two. So the diagram shows two solid toy bricks, A and B. Okay? A is a triangular prism of length 5. The cross section of A is an isosceles right angle triangle. Okay, so that means you've got equal size on both, which is of 6. Brick B is half a cylinder of length 5. That's, that's cool as well. You can use it, the volume of a cylinder formula. The semicircular cross section of brick B has diameter of 6. Okay, now the volume of brick A is greater than the volume of brick B. How much greater? We answer to 1 dp. Alright, so essentially, just got to find the volume of both and then find the difference. So let's find the volume of this first shape here. Now, to work out the volume of, a, of any given prism, the best way to do this is to work out the area of its face, the cross-sectional area, so 6 by 6 over 2. That's the area of a triangle, 6 by 6 over 2. And then multiply across by 5, by its additional length. And we can put that in the calculator in a second. Now, to work out the volume of um, this um, half cylinder, first things first, we, use, we write down the volume of a cylinder, which is literally... Um, pi r squared times the height and then because it's half a cylinder you just divide it by 2 and you're done now all you want to do is just substitute the values in and we've got it so basically the solution of the first one is going to give us a total volume of 90 so this is 90 now for the second shape if you work at the volume of this one we know that the radius is actually this bit here it's half the length of the diameter so 6 is diameter by the way so cutting this and just drawing a line across, this would be a radius of 3. And the height of the cylinder is 5. So it's going to be pi times 3 squared times 5 all over 2. And if you put this in the calculator, you're going to get 45 over 2 pi. And that's it. Now we just subtract both of them to see which is bigger. So in your calculator, write 90 minus 45 over 2 pi. And you should get an answer to 1 dp of 19.3 centimeters cubed. And that's it. Question. Okay, number three. So here are the first five terms of a number sequence. Yeah, Find an expression in terms of n for the nth term. Okay, so before we even do this, we look at the sequence and we ask ourselves what's happening. Well, 
it looks to me like they're going up in plus sixes. And now for part A, when they want you to find the nth term, a nice little trick is to literally ask yourself again, what is it going up in? Well, it's going up in sixes, so it'll be six n. And then we just circle 10 and just go one back. If we subtract this by six, we get plus four. And that's it guys, that's literally my, my way of finding the nth term. All right, part B. So the nth term of a sequence t is given by n squared minus three, okay? There are numbers that are terms in both sequences s and t. Find one of these numbers. Okay, what is what is, this is actually telling us is that both of these sequences must have the same term. Now, if they have the same term, there's a good chance that at some value of n, these two equations will be equal. So we say, all right, this is telling us that n squared minus three must equal six n plus four at some common n value. And that's it. Now, to literally evaluate this, let's go ahead and move all these terms to the left side, yeah? So subtracting 6n and subtracting 4, you're going to get n squared minus 6n minus 7 equals 0. So now, in order to solve this so simply and easily, we could just use a quadratic formula, where a is 1 is the first term, b is minus 6, and c is minus 7. So the terms in front of the values, yeah? So using the quadratic formula, it looks a bit like that. It's minus b plus minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac over 2a. Now, by the way, guys, some of your calculus can already solve this. So if you can just put in your calculator the quadratic formula, you can just skip this part. For everybody else that wants to use a formula, let's keep going, yeah? So for this bit now, replacing minus b, since, since b is minus 6, minus b will become plus 6. That will be plus minus the square root of b squared, which is minus 6 squared minus 4 times a times minus, uh, c, all over 2 times a. And again, putting this all in your calculator, by, by first using the plus sign, we're going to get a result of, um, let's see, 7. And if you use the minus sign, you can get a result of negative 1. So now we have to choose which of these two values do we keep. Well, for the nth term, m term only cares about your position, so the first or second or third. We can't have a negative position, so the only answer is 7. So the value of n must be 7. And by the way, the answer is not done yet. So now we plug in n equals 7 to any of these m term equations. So I'm just going to plug into this one because I can see it. And when you plug in, you're going to get 7 squared minus 3, which will give us 46. So this is one of the, the terms they're talking about. Okay. Yeah, and that's it, guys. I think we're done. Okay, number 4. So on Saturday, Jacob walked 10,800 steps. Now the next day, he walked 7% more steps than on Saturday. Work out how many steps Jacob walked on Sunday. Okay, nice and easy. So here we can just literally use the OV formula. So OV times 1 plus or minus a rate will give us a new value. Now for this kind of formula, you could always use it for any percentage-based questions or compound interest questions. So here we can say that the original value he walked was 10,800 steps. And his rate of increase was 7%. So it's going to be 1 plus 7%. And this will give us a new value, which is in our calculator. 11,556 steps. And that's how much he walked. All right, number five. So the scale drawing shows the position of a hall and the position of a library. And here they are. Now, the scale tells us that one centimeter in real, in, on paper, it represents 20 meters in real life. Now, the post box is 140 meters, in other words, 7 centimeters if you divide by 20, from the library on a bearing of 220 degrees. So you have to travel 220 degrees and it goes straight down around here. Show the position of the post box on the scale drawing. Mark the position of a cross and label it P. Okay, so this kind of question is unique in the sense that I'm not going to be doing it on paper. Everything's going to be done on screen, okay? So I've already actually solved the problem. I'm just going to show you guys how I did it and the tools I use. So the first thing you want to do here is realize that you're dealing with a bearing of 220 degrees. What that means is that you start from the north line and you do like a full, like a 220 degrees uh, circle clockwise. You'll notice that you're going to cross 180 degrees and your protractor only goes up to 180. So what I would personally recommend is do something like this. Firstly, draw a straight dot line down and lay and just angle at 180 degrees and realize you need to find an additional 40 degrees here from this point here and to do that and here's my protractor I put a marking over here yeah so you can see the 40 degrees here and now you just want to draw a straight line all the way across using your ruler that makes exactly seven centimeters down and a mark at the bottom a P 
like over here and yeah and when you do that you've done it so now let's do part b oh yeah don't forget to put an x as well yeah to mark the spot so use your scale drawing to find now the real distance in meters of the hole from the post box so p is the post box now you're just going to draw a straight line over here and when you do that you're going to get a distance of roughly 7.7 .7 centimeters and that's equivalent to 154 meters if you times it by 20 using the scale representation okay so that part's okay so again this part here was was point p and we traveled all the way across it using a ruler yeah so that's the length of the line now finally they want us to calculate the bearing of the hole from the post box so now we draw a north line at the post box so it's going to look like this and then you're going to do a clockwise move, movement around this over here now the smart thing to do is instead of doing a clockwise <clears throat> just work out the angle difference between here and here so to do that put your mark in here and you realize that you're going to get it says 150 here but the, the actual real difference between 180 and 150 is 30 degrees so there's a gap here of 30 degrees <clears throat> meaning if you went all the way around it'll be 330 degrees clockwise with a bearing okay number six okay so pentagon a b c d e is shown inside a regular octagon okay so here's our pentagon and here's our regular octagon the pentagon has exactly one line of symmetry so i'm guessing it's split in the middle like this yeah so this is our symmetry now this because of that symmetry this pretty much implies that this angle and this angle must be the same so let's get, just call them both y okay so now we got this and before we even answer the question let's try and figure out what y is yeah and this would help us find x which is what they want now to find y we need to first ask ourselves is how much does a pentagon add up to at least all its angles now now a nice method we use is the sum of interior angles so the sum of all the angles inside and gen the general formula is always the number size minus 2 times 180 degrees. Okay? And now because we're dealing with a pentagon here, we've got it's a five-sided shape, so it'd be 5 minus 2, which is 3. 3 times 180. If you put this in a calculator, you get 540 degrees. Okay, so now we know that all five of these must add up to make 540. So we can say that 112 plus another 112 plus 84, which is 308 degrees, plus these two angles y, so plus 2y must make 540 and now we just go ahead and solve this so making y the subject we can subtract 308 across so it's going to give us uh, 232 so 2y equals 232 degrees and then we just half this to get y now in halving this value you're going to get 116 degrees okay so now we can update this okay so now we know that y is 116 we can go ahead and deal with this regular octagon yeah so one key thing to note because the shape is regular, this means that all of its angles and lengths are the same. Okay, that's literally the number one tip. All of them are the same. Now, let's use the same method and figure out how many angles a regular octagon is supposed to add up to, yeah? So, we can say that the sum of the interior for a regular octagon, which is which is n minus 2 times 180, where n is the number size, so we have 8-sided shape. So, 8 take away 2 is 6. So, 6 times 180 is um, duh, 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 1080. And now we can say that each interior angle, by the way, so to get each angle, if we know all of it adds up to 1080, we can divide it by 8 to get each angle. So 1080 divided by 8 is 135 degrees. Okay, so this means here, this is 135, this is 135, and that this means these two combined is 135. So therefore, we have 116 plus x must give us 135 degrees. So therefore, just solving for x by minusing 116 across, we're going to get exactly 19 degrees. And that's it guys, question solved. So the diagram shows us a trapezium and they want us to work out the value of y, which is this length over here. Okay, so this one is um, not as obvious, but what I personally recommend, when you get shapes like this and you've got angles and lengths mixed up, what I would personally do is go ahead and try and split this up into compound shapes, yeah? So you see this rectangle here and this kind of triangle. If we draw like a little dotted line here, we're going to get a nice right angle triangle. And we know that this length here, which is parallel to that 15, must also make it a 15 centimeter length here. And we can call this little extra length x here. Yeah? So let's just ignore y for a second. Now y is going to be like the whole thing. The whole thing is y. Now, if we just pull out this right angle triangle for a second, yeah, and we're going to go ahead and try and work out the x's. Because if you work out x, you can work out the whole thing. Okay, so you got 15 and you got, what is it? 
we know that the whole angle here is 125. If we split this up, we have a right angle triangle, so this is 90. This means the leftover bit here from 125, 90 must be 35 degrees. And that's what we're going to put over here. Okay? Now, to solve this one, this is a straight up Sokotoa problem, yeah? So, Sokotoa. So, it's a trick problem. And now, when you do a trick problem, we always care about two things, yeah? We care about the relevant side. And the fact it's right angle. So looking at this here, we can say that the length opposite angle is the op, so the O, and the one next to it is the adjacent, A. And that's what we care about. Always avoid trying to label every side. Just label the relevant sides, yeah? So because we've got O and A, we can say now that that, that involves Toa, because Toa has O and A, and Ka and So don't. So this means, using the formula, we can say we have tan of the angle, so tan 35 must equal the opposite, x over adjacent 15 and now all you want to do guys here is rearrange to make x a subject so times in 15 across we're going to have 15 times tan 35 equals x and that's it now if you just enter down your calculator for a second you're going to get an exact um length of uh well of about 10.5 now i guess we're done so since we know that this little length must be 10.5, and of course, this whole thing is 37, which means this length is the same, which is also 37, we know that the total length Y must be 37 plus 10.5. And when you do that, you get a total length of 47.5 uh, centimeters. And that's it.